For today's lecture, we're going to start chapter two, original soil and green size. And uh, this is uh, one of the main course objectives. So if you look at this course objective list I showed in a previous lecture, um, chapter two, particle size is part of the second course objective. So the purpose of studying particle sizes is to basically to classify soil for engineering purposes. So chapter two through five will focus on this first or second course objective. Uh, in terms of what we're going to do in this chapter, it's actually going to be just a, a we'll probably finish everything today. Um, so we'll briefly uh, discuss this origin of soil. So rock type, rock cycle and soil formation. And then the focus of this chapter is on the next two body points, particle size mechanical analysis and particle size distribution curve. So these two items are really the core of this chapter. And your first two labs are basically mechanical analysis tests. One is stiff, one is hydrometer analysis. And then uh, we'll talk about particle size distribution curve as well. So that's the plan for this chapter. And first let's uh, talk a little bit about rock cycle and origin of soil. So this is really geology side of things. And the reason we're interested in geology side of things is because soils come from rock. So basically soils are the weathering product or rocks and many physical properties of soils and uh, physical uh, composition of soils are dictated by size, shape and chemical composition of rocks and their uh, uh, greens. So that's why we want to briefly talk about different types of rocks. And list on this slide is uh, a rock cycle figure. And I want to highlight three uh, basic types of rock on this slide. One is igneous rock, one is sedimentary, and the other one is metamorphic rock. So these are the three basic types of rocks. And I'll give you just a couple of examples for each type of basic rocks. And let's start with the first one. Uh, igneous rock. So igneous rocks are basically formed by the solidification of molten magma. And I listed two examples on this slide. One is granite and one is basalt. So these are two common types of igneous rocks. And the second type is sedimentary. And sedimentary rocks are formed by the cementation of weathering product and their overburden pressure. And again, two common examples are sandstone and limestone. So these are sedimentary rocks. And then the third type, basic type is metamorphic. And metamorphic is basically the process of changing the composition and texture of rocks by heat and pressure. Two common examples, marble and slate. So these are uh, metamorphic rocks. In rocks, uh, this is not, not the focus of this, course, uh, rock mechanics by itself is a different subject, but rocks have been used as construction materials for thousands of years. And I've listed one example. This is a Parthenon in Greece, which is a marble structure built on a limestone hill. And this structure has been standing for over 2000 years. So rocks, again, by itself is a common construction material. But for geotechnical engineering course, for this course, we're, go we're going to focus on the weathering product rocks, which is soil. So the first weathering process, this is basically the process of breaking down rocks by two processes. One is mechanical, and the other one is chemical. So these are the two common processes that break down rocks into smaller pieces, and that resulting products is what we call soils. So basically soils are the weathering product of rocks. In just a couple quick examples for mechanical processes. Uh, perhaps the most common one is wind and water. Mm ocean waves, glacier ice, and even earthquakes. So these are 
uh, some examples of mechanical processes that can break down rocks into smaller pieces, which basically will recall soil. In, in terms of chemical processes, some common examples. Um, hydration, that's it. This is a combined effect with water. Oxidation. In carbonation. So these are some common examples of chemical and mechanical processes. So that's a very, very brief overview of rock types, rock cycles. And basically, as I mentioned, the reason we're concerned with these is because soils come from rocks. So soils are the weathering products of rocks. So the next two bullet points, as I mentioned, that's really the core of this chapter. That's soil particle size and mechanical analysis, and then particle size distribution curve. So for first for soil particle mechanics basics, I've recorded a short video, it's about 60 minutes, 40 seconds. And I'm going to make this link available online. So I want you to go over this uh, short video on particle size basics and complete the missing information in your slides. As I mentioned, um, for particle sizes, to determine particle sizes in a soil sample, there are two commonly used mechanical methods. And before I go over these two, just very quickly here. So this is the two commonly used particle size distributions uh, classification system. And for most of the time in this class, we're going to focus on the second one, the USCS. And in this system, so one thing I want to point out, gravel and sand. So these two together, they are called coarse grained particles or coarse grained soils. So these two are coarse grained or just simply coarse particles. And then fine grained or simply fines are basically particles smaller than 0 0.075. So this is the particle size separating coarse grained soil from fine grained soil. So separating gravel and sand from fines. And then for these two mechanical analysis methods, one is sieve analysis, which is applied to particles greater than 0 0.075. So that's what we call coarse particles or coarse green particles. And hydrometer analysis is for anything smaller than 0 0.075, which we call fines or fine green particles. For sieve analysis, that's your first lab. So sieve analysis, as mentioned again, this is for coarse particles. So basically particles that are larger than 0 0.075 millimeter. In this sieve analysis consists of basically shaking your soil sample through a set of pre-calibrated sieves that have progressively smaller openings towards the bottom. On the right-hand side, this is a picture of a stack of sieves. So that's uh, what you use to conduct sieve analysis. And for these sieves, you have larger openings at the top, towards the top, and then progressively smaller openings towards the bottom. So smaller openings towards the bottom. And typically in a sieve analysis, you use six or seven sieves, and the one you put on top is typically number four. And the one at the very bottom is typically number 200. So this last one here, this is typically number 200 sieve. And then the percent soil passing through a certain size, the sieve is measured, and then we can calculate and plot a semi-logarithmic graph we call particle size distribution curve.
or simply a PSD curve. But the re, again, the results of the sieve analysis are plotted in this semi-log plot we call particle size distribution curve. And if you watched that video, you know what a particle size distribution curve looks like. So you have a log x scale that's particle size, and in the y scale, you have percent final or percent passing. So that's PSD curve. In, in terms of these sieves, in, so this table shows the basically that US sieve sizes with number designation. And I want to highlight two here. The first one is that number two, number four sieve I mentioned, which you already put at the top of your stack, and this separates gravels from sand. And the opening of this sieve number four is 4.75. So that's the size in the USCS system that separates gravels from sand. So that's typically the sieve you put at the very top. And then the one you put at the very bottom, that number 200 sieve has an opening of 0 0.075 millimeter. And that separates coarse green soil from fines. So separate. And this coarse green soil again consists of gravel and sand. So that's basically gravel and sand. And it also separates, of course, sand from fines. So that's the number uh, 200 steep. And in between, as I mentioned, uh, you totally, totally you have six or seven sieves. So the sieves in between, uh, the sizes depend on the, uh, the, the soil sample. So you can put a different combinations in between, but always larger openings on top and smaller openings towards the bottom. So that's US sieve sizes. And the second type of mechanical analysis is hydrometer analysis. And this is your lab number two. And hydrometer analysis is for particles smaller than 0.075. And this is based on the principle of sedimentation of soil grains in water, uh, specifically uh, smaller particles. So basically different particle sizes settle at a different rate in a water suspension and smaller particles settle slower than larger particles. So basically we use this principle of sedimentation. So we know particles of different sizes settle at a different rate and smaller particles settle slower than larger particles. And we can measure the rate of particle settle in the water suspension and then correlate that rate to particle size using Stokes law. So that's the physics law behind this analysis. And then we correlate the rate to particle size using Stokes law. So that's how we determine particle sizes in hydrometer analysis. So that's hydrometer analysis. There is another video. Uh, this is basically a step-by-step -step instruction to plot a particle size distribution curve using Excel. And this might be uh, helpful for your lab reports.